Hello and welcome to your Fresh Face One Shots. My name is Joey. And I'm Jacob. And today we are back with Superman by Joshua Williamson and our second ever DC All In issue we have coming up here. Um, Dan Moore is taking over on art. Massive news, obviously. And it's just as good as you'd expect. It looks so good. I just... Ugh. I'm still sad about Jamal Campbell, but goddamn, Dan Moore does such a great job. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, first all in issue... Uh, let's just jump into this. I I don't have any preamble. I was yeah yeah I agree. something we, there. We, but... we start we start as all good stories start at the end. Um, the implication is the end of everything. Who knows? Um, yeah, the time. Yeah, um, Superman is is face to face with the time trapper. Uh, who, if memory serves, I don't think has ever had a canon secret identity until today. Um, Fucking Joshua Williamson. We'll get to it at the end of the issue. But goddamn, it's it's actually Joshua so good. Joshua Williamson is, um, is making some choices, and they're interesting. Yeah, and and as always, they are absolutely interesting insane. choices. So good. But yeah, we're teasing the time trapper here. <clears throat> Uh, is uh, uh, we're pondering this idea of of Superman outliving all everyone that he ever knows and loves um, beyond you know the the death of Superman he will continue to exist um, the physical being Superman not just the idea of Superman as we as seems to be you know the the usual consensus no no this is this is this is going back to like the pre crisis idea of Superman is an alien immortal yeah. and. Um, would have to give up being Superman potentially to be happy with Lois, yeah. um, though yeah. not not quite which, obviously which, with the way which, Williams is playing it. But that's mm -hmm. typically how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but of course, the bulk of the issue uh, we go back to the present day, uh, a present day in which Lois Lane has superpowers. I at first assumed this was an absolute power fallout thing, but the end of the issue kind of implies otherwise. Yeah, apparently it isn't. Yeah, apparently um, there's still a mystery to figure out because there's a little like I, tease page at the end here, like how did Lois Lane get her powers? Um, so, I, I thought it might have been the oh we we had the um, end of absolute power with all the power with some power swaps happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I thought it was that, but it, 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 the implication is kind of that it's not. Um, but also the implication here is that super Lois has been Superwoman for a little bit now. There's been a bit of a time jump in between absolute power and now, uh, and so here we are. We have Lois Lane similar to Clark having to come up with excuses to just leave all of her co-workers and go change in a closet. And I love the scene when Lois and Clark find each other in a closet about to change into their super outfits. It's so sweet. I love so it. So Dan Horner just draws these. this Clark as this massive dork, and I love it. Like Yo, ugh, The way they look at each other, the way they open their shirts and show the symbols, and the, that great two-page spread of Superman and Superwoman going into action. I love it. I'm all for this. Give me so much more. I, I'm in love. I, I need I need it. I love it. Um, so good. Uh, we are here to uh, to fight the Atomic Skull, uh, who is who is attacking Metropolis and uh, uh, with his brand new Atomic Zoo. Yes, <laughs> I love those things. <laughs> so good. Um, we have Super Corp watching over it, of course. Mercy uh, watching over. Meanwhile, uh, Lena is showing her father footage of Lex Luthor being evil and I kind of love the way Mora draws uh, Lex's reactions to this. He's like, wow, um, what a bad guy. I'm not that guy. <laughs> I really appreciate that though. Like it's, it's, it's Lex seeing a side of himself that he legit just is not part of anymore. Um, I think it's really cool. I, I just, I, I appreciate that approach. It's not a, oh, I know what I am now. I must become what I was. Um, I, I, I like that. I mean, I'm sure we'll reset. I'm sure we'll reset him eventually. But I mean, I yeah, this this is sadly one of those things that isn't going to stick because the, the certain status quo things have to happen. Comics are comics. <laughs> but yeah, I really like is... it. Also, I, I like the idea of Lena trying to be good to her father, even neglecting her her work. Yeah, in doing yeah. so. Yep, uh, it's, it's cool. I like it. Um, yeah, we do sort of a we do a sort of flashback as to like showing uh, uh, what Super Superwoman has been doing since she she has had her powers. Um, after stopping the Atomic Skull, we uh, uh, we are then thrown right back into the action once again as Doomsday shows up and starts wreaking havoc on Metropolis. Um, we get a great first off. We also get Dan Moore redrawing Death of Superman, and I just. I didn't know I needed that, and now I have it, and I need more. Um, but uh, yeah, we get a little flashback, a flashback panel showing Death of Superman. Um, we know it's getting serious, and this is all 
cut off very quickly by the appearance of the Time Trapper, um, Super Rand seeing him, and the Time Trapper unveiling his identity after freezing time so that him and Super Rand can talk, uh, revealing his identity to be Doomsday? Like I guess that's he straight up he straight up says, like, once at your own hands, back when you knew me as Doomsday. Like, it's just Doomsday. It's not a, you know, a char- a character that is the same species or whatever as Doomsday. Like it is just it's just, it's just Doomsday. What? <laughs> I kinda love it. I kinda love it. Is it weird that I kinda love it? I I it's it's certainly a swing. I'm curious to see what Josh Williamson does with this. Um, I really love that we have this now also, considering way back when I had your first Superman comics be the full Death, death and Return of Superman arc. Yeah, I, just, I kind of love that. <laughs> it's, it's kind of fitting. Um, it's like poetry, it rhymes. Yes. Also, it's great. This feels like a jumping on point. Like, yeah, yeah. The only other th- the only thing that I could see confusing new readers is the the Lex memory wipe thing. Other- yeah, but I otherwise, mean- I think it's, it's it's pretty safe for new readers. Even then, it's it's. I, I think Williamson does a good job of catching people up that in a page that hey, Lex Luthor has memory loss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and honestly, like I, I think of, of the all in issues I've read so far, which has only been the ones we've done on one shot so far uh, with um, Wonder Woman and Superman. I think they're both pretty good jumping on points. Um, I, I I just appreciate that. I, I think there's been a, a real attempt to make all in an actual an actual good jumping on point. I, I just I like that. Um, like with Dawn of DC, uh, that that we sort of jumped on with a lot of titles uh, previously. I I think this is doing a great job of doing the same thing. And um, of course, we also have the Absolute Universe uh, uh, kicking off at the same time, which is also a great jumping on point for new readers. Um, very cool stuff. A lot of great things. We also get a great little tease page page at the end here. Uh, how did Lois Lane Lo- 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 get her powers? The secret. Uh, the sinister secret of the time trapper and the uh, a future of horrors something about that i don't know that's the only th- only thing i don't i'm totally clueless on on the, on the tease page here but uh but i'm excited i'm excited nonetheless and uh as always williamson just does a great job with pacing and and uh, great little character moments i don't think i've disliked pretty much anything in williamson superman run um other than, worst like, it's very, been very minor, at, at worst it's been a solid fun time like yeah yeah um but always like, great. Uh, seriously, if this if this is your jumping on point for Super Ran, go back and check out the rest of the run. It's so damn good. Uh, Joshua Williamson, I think, is has is in recent times one of my absolute favorite Super Ran writers. I really really love him. He he just clearly loves the character and is it's like it, in a lot of ways it feels like a kid playing with action figures. <laughs> yeah, um, in the in the best way possible. Like like that is meant as a compliment. Um, yeah, it's it's great. I love it. If it was meant derogatorily, you could tell in the, in the tone of my voice. Very true. Very true. Um, but all that said, uh, great issue, and uh, looking forward to more, as always. But I think that about does it. So uh, uh, check out other Fresh Face One Shots we do. We obviously cover Superman by Joshua Williamson. Uh, we cover Wonder Woman by Tom King, Batman the Brave and the Bold by Various. Uh, we also have coming up uh, tomorrow the final issue of Death in the Family Robin Lives. Uh, with the uh, alternate future in which uh, Jason Todd survived, so check that out. Uh, we also cover uh, Batman The Long Halloween, The Last Halloween, which has its second issue coming up next week. Uh, we also cover The Uncanny X-Men by Gail Simone, and myself on Fresh Face Solos, I cover X-Men by Jed McKay, to sort of cross over with that. Uh, we also have the main podcast, Fresh Face Comics, where we just finished a run of Flash episodes, and just yesterday at the time of this coming up, we did a bonus episode on Jessica Jones Season 1, and coming up next on the main podcast, we have uh, some Aquaman stuff. Uh, we're finishing up new 52 Aquaman with Jeff Parker, Cullen Bunn, and Dan Abnett. So check all that out when that comes out. And uh, as always, our link trees will be in the ter- description below, as well as Amazon links to the digital issue of, uh, of what we covered today. Uh, and I think that about does it. So thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, this has been Joey Morgan. Jacob Licklider. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>